Thank you so much for joining us today for the Power Platform French Summit. My name is Charles Zamana. I'm the Corporate Vice President of Low Code Platforms at Microsoft. And I'm incredibly excited to talk a little bit about what the Power Platform is focusing on and what it means to our community, and also to go connect and engage with all the great Power Platform fans out there in the French community. Um, to get started, I wanted to first say thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody that's listening in. Thank you for everybody in the French Power Platform user groups and online communities for everything that you do. Uh, without our community, it wouldn't be possible to have such a great, exciting, novel product out there. Um, and we wouldn't be able to go reach so many companies and customers and users around the globe if it weren't for everything that you do. And in particular, I want to say thank you um, to all the great folks who helped organize this great, this fantastic event to go reach the, the French Power Platform community um, to make sure that we have a chance to come together across multiple days and learn more about the Power Platform and hear some great stories out there. So again, just really thank you for what every, everything that everybody's doing to go make the Power Platform a reality uh, across the globe. Uh, again, just it wouldn't be possible without all the great work that everybody does. And to go jump into what we're talking about, what we're thinking about for Power Platform right now, the first thing I want to say is a quote from Satya, uh, our CEO at Microsoft, where he said that we've seen two years of digital transformation in just two months. And when he said this, he was referring to uh, what COVID-19, uh, its impact on all of our customers in terms of business operations, as well as the broader macroeconomic impact for so many of our customers. And this is really interesting to see because um, so many of our customers out there have had to quickly respond and build and develop solutions digitally to go respond to the unique situation. That's things like telehealth, telecommuting, e-commerce, curbside pickup, um, you name it. Basically, every aspect of the economy has been impacted and had to go reimagine how they use technology to, to survive and ultimately thrive during unique situations like the one we found ourselves in during 2020 due to the COVID-19 situation. And beyond just what the impact is for businesses, when they have to think about how they go change their operations, um, it also has pretty dramatic impact to the workforce. Um, and I know this is a, a little bit of an odd slide to have on a Power Platform presentation, but I really wanted to highlight that what we're seeing right now is pretty significant unemployment around the globe, largely being caused, ca caused by what the World Bank is calling the Great Lockdown, so the COVID-19 uh, travel and work restrictions and the resulting impact on the economy. Um, really, um, the worst recession that we've seen in quite some time um, and really causing pretty dramatic unemployment uh, in really every developed uh, country and every country across the, in, in the world. So if you look at what this means from a job perspective, though, is a little bit of something uh, called a K-shaped recovery. And what we mean by that is that we're seeing um, basically the non-repetitive, digital development, high, highly sophisticated positions, they're not really being that impacted during this transformation. But uh, tasks that can be automated, tasks that can be replaced with technology are being heavily impacted. And that's the difference between the blue line and the orange line in the chart on this slide. We're seeing people that um, maybe can't go become remote workers or can't use, do, go and do software development, they're being the most impacted as a result of all of these uh, different changes associated with COVID-19. And if we look at all of this going on, and if we were to go drill into that blue line uh, about the, the high cognitive skill jobs, um, and we go look at what that's meaning for software and digital digitization and digital transformation, we can see that we're still projecting massive job growth um, across the board with uh, 149 million new jobs projected across development, cybersecurity, data analysis, AI, and ML. Um, really, uh, despite all of these changes, we're seeing just rapid adoption and rapid development of new digital positions, new development positions uh, around the globe. And one of the things that we like to think about at Microsoft is how can we go help our users and our customers build a better future, build a better career? And um, the answer isn't, always uh, maybe super obvious because you could see this and say the answer is to go teach everybody to write code, but I'd say definitively that's not the answer. We don't get um, everybody to be able to participate in all this digital transformation and digital development by having them learn how to write C Sharp or Python or Java, um, but instead what we're doing the Power Platform, what you, the community, are helping us do with the Power Platform, which is to turn everybody 
into a developer with low code. Uh, make it so that anybody that could use PowerPoint or Excel can start to become a developer or do automation with Power Apps and Power Automate. And in the past, um, digitization and automation overly benefited skilled workers and technology companies um, and other folks were left behind. This is what creative destruction or disruption is talking about. Um, really didn't have an opportunity to go participate. But what we can do together is that the community and Microsoft, we can really use low code to go create ep economic opportunity for everybody, to make it so everybody can be a developer, everybody can be involved and engage and contribute to all of this digital transformation that's happening across every single industry. And when we look at um, the French Power Platform Community Group, you're doing such a great job reaching uh, such a great community and helping teach them and educate them and enrich their skills when it comes to the Power Platform. And together, we're really able to go democratize development to make it so that anybody, no matter where you are, what language you speak, um, what your background is, can start to become a developer and, and live and feel that magic you, you do when you go create your first app or create your first bot or create your first Power BI dashboard. Um, so that's really what our focus is um, at Microsoft. And um, it's easy for us to put it on slides, but what gets us super excited is when we see our customers start to live uh, and kind of fulfill this dream. And so I'm just gonna play a quick video to really show this in action. My name is Fui Olajide Bilu. I work with Sterling Bank, PLC, here in Nigeria. The first app I built came about from the request of a business user saying, we would like to put this Excel sheet on OneDrive. And I said, what we need to do is we need to build an app for this. And I built my first app using Power Apps. After that, people got to hear about the app and how quickly it was done. I'm like, oh, for me, I would like to build an app. So I thought to myself, why should I upskill myself alone? And why should every other person not know how to do this themselves? So I thought about the idea of Citizen Developer Academy. So the user group, we started with two, and we started to grow in that way, and we're currently 1,200. And when they learn, they get so inspired, and they go back to their communities, they go back to their schools to start up local user groups there. So we'll have events, and most of the speakers will be male. That was what started our textilers. We're currently over 300 women, all passionate about helping and supporting each other, using our knowledge in the Power Platform. For me, the Power Platform is not just another tool. It's actually a transformational agent. And I believe strongly that if we all get into this revolution, we'll get to a point where our whole country, Nigeria, will be totally transformed. And I love that story from Foyan because it's really a great example of how together between Microsoft and our community, we're able to go help other people get engaged and get started with the Power Platform. She was able to do it first in Lagos and then go expand virtually and digitally. Um, and it wouldn't be possible without great organizations uh, like this one to really go reach everybody around the globe and truly democratize and get everybody involved in development, in software, in digital transformation. Um, so we really look forward and really thank what everybody's doing to, to go make this possible by generating content, um, teaching other people on, on basically apps in a day or virtual meetups on, on the weekend to go really spread the word about Power Platform. Uh, and here's just another great video of Power Platform in action. My name is Lauren Taylor. I am the principal at Manitou Park Elementary. Last year, I was the assistant principal and during that time, I came across Power Apps. The very first app that I created was our reading app. That's really what sparked kind of a lot of the ingenuity in realizing, okay, I can use this for lots of different systems. With COVID, this school year is one like no other. Teachers needed to submit their schedules for working in the building so that we could all follow health department guidelines. And so one suggestion that we were given was a Word document that teachers fill out and then they would email to the principal. I saw so many emails in my inbox, it almost terrified me. I was looking on the Office 365 homepage and I clicked on Power Automate and I thought, oh, this, this automates things. Creating the approval flow in Power Automate has saved us time. Success for us is even in a pandemic, starting with remote learning, our babies are going to learn. 
There's going to be student growth. The principal role is kind of a catch-all. Anything that needs to be done, you get in there and you do it. I'm often asked, do you consider yourself a developer? And I always say, no, I'm an educator. However, I am developing apps. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> And I always love to hear Lauren's story just to see how Power Apps and Power Automate were able to transform how the school operated and in particular to be agile enough to respond to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, and here, there's another great story out there, which I'll play uh, from Total uh, in Solar Power and Solar Energy. Le top management nous a confié la mission de solariser le groupe. Donc en fait, on a en face de nous des sites industriels, des sites de bureaux. On avait un gros challenge qui était de savoir comment réussir à capitaliser toutes les informations en un seul endroit. Donc c'est de la base de données, de la gestion de base de données, des contacts, des données techniques sur les projets, évidemment. Donc voilà, c'était un projet assez ambitieux. Ouais. L'équipe de solarisation a mené une réflexion pour se doter d'outils, d'une part pour promouvoir le programme au sein du groupe et d'autre part pour permettre à l'équipe de solarisation d'avoir un reporting en temps réel sur l'avancée du programme dans, dans sa globalité. Solariser le groupe, ça a été un sacré challenge. Effectivement, on a énormément de, de sites dans le monde euh, qu'il faut adresser, récupérer de l'info, euh, trouver les bons contacts. C'est pas toujours chose facile. Ouais. Lorsque je suis arrivé dans les équipes de Total Solar, euh, il y avait déjà les outils Office 365 qui étaient disponibles pour l'ensemble des collaborateurs. Et du coup, ça a été une suite assez logique de pouvoir utiliser euh, Power BI, Power Apps, euh, Power Automate euh, pour pouvoir répondre aux besoins qu'on avait. Et très vite, on s'est rendu compte que c'était très agile et facile d'utilisation. Je me suis rapidement euh, aperçu de la la puissance de cette interaction entre les différents outils Microsoft. Par exemple, on a beaucoup de projets qui se font à l'étranger et donc c'est parfois difficile d'avoir de l'information qui est remontée depuis le site jusqu'à jusqu nous. Aujourd'hui, ces outils nous permettent d'avoir de façon très rapide, aux bonnes phases du projet, l'information que l'on souhaite avoir, même à l'autre bout du monde. Avec Power Apps de Microsoft, effectivement, l'idée, c'est de mettre les mains dans le cambouis et on arrive rapidement à sortir quelque chose. Aujourd'hui, PowerApp, c'est euh, des propriétés qu'on change, des couleurs, des, euh, des mises en forme. Euh, mais le, toute la partie euh, derrière est assurée automatiquement de par l'application. Ce que ça veut dire, c'est qu'on n'a pas besoin d'être programmeur. Dès qu'on montre finalement ce genre de solution en interne, euh, on a des, euh, des idées qui, qui sortent. Euh, ça peut s'appliquer à de la gestion de facturation, ça peut s'appliquer à de la gestion de congés, ça peut s'appliquer... Voilà. Finalement, à partir du moment où on a une application dans les mains, disponible en plus sur un équipement mobile, il n'y a pas de limite. Hein. Ça, ça c'est un vrai gain de temps aujourd'hui euh, par rapport à des projets traditionnels qu'on a l'habitude de mener euh, dans les directions informatiques. La Power Platform permet vraiment de, de fonctionner beaucoup plus sur un mode agile. Une des valeurs du groupe Total, c'est l'esprit pionnier. Et euh, aujourd'hui, Microsoft est aussi dans cette dynamique-là. C'est toujours aller dans la, dans la recherche de, de ce qui peut être le mieux pour les équipes et les aider euh, un maximum dans leurs activités quotidiennes. Je pense que ce type d'outil, euh, type Power Apps, on est euh, balbutiement et que ça va, ça va exploser. Ouais. And that's such a great example of how low code can go help companies quickly transform and launch and improve initiatives like the solar force from Total. Um, and it's such a great uh, effort uh, when you go think about what it means to drive the solarization of as many places around the globe as possible. And if we look at kind of one of the recurring themes in a lot of these videos is this idea that the modern information worker will need to be able to do lightweight development. And they're not going to do it by writing code. They're not going to do it by opening Visual Studio or VS Code or something like that. They're going to do it by using a tool like the Power Platform, using a low code series of uh, applications and offerings to quickly build out digital solutions they need each and every day, just like they would use Excel or PowerPoint or Word to go solve their problems uh, right now. And even though information workers are playing such a key role um, when adopting these low code tools, we're also seeing the emergence of new job postings and new positions from our partners and other companies who are turning to Power Platform and Power Apps more specifically to go build out their development capabilities. 
And this is actually a chart of all the brand new job postings over the last six months across tons of different companies around the globe who are hungry and looking for people to become Power App specialists. And this is a background you can do even if you didn't study computer science, even if you're not a classical developer, you can go become a low code developer with Power Apps and the Power Platform. Um, so no matter what your background is, there's real opportunity out there. And as you go from a community perspective and help other people sign up and become part of the Power Platform and Power Apps community, you're helping them also go find and explore and discover new career opportunities and new um, positions that they can go pursue even beyond their current current role. So a lot of great, exciting capabilities and opportunities out there. So the information worker, the office worker will need to do low code development. We have partners looking to admins and non developers to use a power platform. But of course, I can't finish the session without talking about what power platform and power apps does for coders and pro developers as well. Instead of taking my word for it, let me just play a quick video um, from some of the big developer fans out there for the Power Platform. With the Microsoft Power Platform, developers around the world are innovating, transforming processes, and deploying highly complex end-to-end -end automation solutions. As a pro dev, it allows me to deliver functionality faster with less code, but where required, we can use more advanced techniques to extend the platform further. And this is the beauty of the Power Platform. As a developer, there are two things I absolutely love about the Power Platform. Number one is productivity with rapid development. I can build solutions in days and in the process, help organizations get deeper value out of their investments in the Microsoft Cloud ecosystem and SaaS services. Number two, it empowers me as a developer to effortlessly build solutions using my favorite tools, programming languages, and development environments. What I also think is really special, especially for my career, is that we can execute on a lot of projects in a short amount of time. It really makes you understand the underlying needs of the customer a lot better. And this creates a great partnership that you can just continue to execute on projects month after month. So I learned about the Power Platform when I was fresh out of school. One of my first projects was developing a Power App that involved many embedded flows. Now this project had lots of visibility. So I was presenting this project to the director of the business each week. Now, since I was still learning about the Power Platform, when I had questions and needed help fast, I went to the community for help. Now, after acquiring all this knowledge from the community, I'm giving back to the community and providing knowledge to other users that needed help, just like me. Working as a full stack developer, I was used to building most custom components from scratch. So that's one of the things that I love about working with the Power Platform is that if I ever need a custom UI component or a background process, I can easily just build that same component in a fraction of the time. As a developer, one of the things that I love about the Power Platform is how easy it is for anyone to come in and build an app. Long gone are the days where it take you weeks, months to get an app together. As a developer, I spent a lot of my career trying to find ways for the business and technical to communicate more effectively. You know, less ambiguous requirements, trying to make sure that we don't build something that wasn't quite asked for. Well, the Power Platform has fundamentally changed the way that I work. We're working as a single team using a single vocabulary. Pro coders can build PCF components and Azure extensions, and then low coders then consume those seamlessly. And the great thing is that you no longer have to pick sides. So, pro code, no code, unite. The Power Platform and most importantly Power Automate has definitely changed my life and helped me make a career out of it. And the idea there is although Power Platform makes it incredibly easy to become a developer, it doesn't mean that developers and coders go anywhere. It's a great tool for those developers and their coders and it makes it so just like we heard in the video uh, pro code, no code unite. It's possible for non coders and coders to work together and collaborate on a single project and a single solution. And with that, uh, my time is coming to an end. And I just want to say thank you so much for everybody that's participated, that's contributed, um, and is a member of this great uh, Power Platform French Summit. And I look forward to seeing the continued innovation, the continued enthusiasm, and all the great content that everybody creates as part of this fantastic community. So from Microsoft, from Redmond, Washington in the US, thank you so much. Uh, look forward to staying in touch.